What's up guys, welcome back to another BGS Returns video. Uh, so this one is another 20 day submission. Uh, this one I sent out in November. And what's kind of strange is that this actually came back just before the one I sent in September, um, whichever one you posted the return video for. So it kind of shows that BGS is a bit all over the place with their uh, admin at the moment, because you'd think at least, no matter how big the backlog is, that the oldest subs would get processed first. Um, but this one's actually over two months newer than my September sub but somehow it got processed a couple of weeks before it. Um, so yeah, that's just how it is sometimes, I guess. Um, without further ado, let's get into the returns. So most of what I sent in this submission was LOB related, but we're gonna start off with the one card that I sent that wasn't from LOB, which was my Chaos Emperor Dragon. Um, so this is a uh, pretty decent copy. The centering on this is really good for a Chaos Emperor Dragon, but like pretty much all of them, it has some lightning on the corners at the top. Uh, it's not always at the top, sometimes it's at the bottom as well. But Chaos Emperor Dragon, in general, nearly always has at least one bit of corner white or a corner crack somewhere on the back. So that's what makes these very difficult to grade, uh, and that's why they'll have a pretty low pop, both in PSA 10 and BGS 9.5. Now, aside from the corners, I thought every other subgrade on this card could get a gem, but I was expecting an 8.5 on corners, so realistically just a 9 overall. And we ended up with that mint 9, uh, with the 8.5 corners, as expected. The edges and surface grades were a little bit harsh in my opinion, but at the end of the day, it doesn't change the overall grade, so I was pretty happy with this. And getting into the LOB now, the first card is a glossy man -eater bug. This is one of the last cards that I'm missing from my complete um, gem mint glossy LOB set. Uh, I think I'm missing this and then a couple of other supers and then Guy the Dragon Champion. And apart from that, I have the entire set done. So I was really hoping this card could gem. Uh, the centering on it's pretty solid for a man -eater bug. Uh, at the top it's pretty much perfect, but it does tilt off a little bit at the bottom. Uh, you can see like at the bottom the, the left is thicker than the right. So centering I thought was either a 9 or a 9.5 depending on the grader. Uh, apart from that, the card is pretty clean overall. It does have some horizontal lines on the back, which nearly all glossy manual bugs that I've owned do have that. Uh, edges and corners on the back are good, but there is one little nick at the top on the front which, uh, <clears throat> depending on the grader, that can probably affect either edges or corners. So I was thinking overall this probably would just get a 9, but probably something like a quad plus plus 9, very close to a 9.5. And we ended up with a mint 9, as expected, uh, with the 8.5 surface, which is a little bit disappointing on this, because the only issue on the card, surface-wise, is those factory lines on the back, and they're pretty light. But again, like with the Chaos Emperor Dragon, it, it would have been nice to have slightly better subgrades, but it doesn't really change the overall grade because I didn't think this card was that likely to gem, so I'm fine with it as a 9. And next up is another glossy print LOB Hollow. Uh, this time it's a left armor, the Forbidden One, which is the second lowest pop Exodia limb in PSA 10. Uh, it's just one of those things, the, the left side of Exodia, both the left arm and the left leg, uh, both in wavy and glossy, tend to be worse centered than the, the right side. So the PSA 10 pop and BGS 9.5 pop for both of those have always been lower than the right side. Uh, and it makes them much harder to find in gem mint because nearly everyone who has like a three or four out of five complete Exodia set is missing one or two of the left uh, left side pieces. So they very rarely come up for sale as singles. Uh, this one, I wasn't really expecting a gem on. You can probably see that the centering is kind of shifted left to right. Probably a nine on centering, but maybe even an eight five from a harsher grader. Uh, the rest of the front is pretty clean. It doesn't really have much foil scratching or anything like that. Maybe a couple of really light scratches, but that's pretty much inevitable with glossy print cards. Uh, there's a little bit of whitening at the bottom, so edges I thought most likely would get a nine. The back is looking really good overall. Uh, not much whitening, especially the corners are very clean. And the surface I think has, again, a few light scratches, maybe a couple of factory lines. So I was probably expecting a nine on surface on this. Uh, definitely some kind of nine overall considering the centering as well. Uh, we ended up with a quad plus plus nine, which is actually a little better than I expected on this. Uh, the edges ended up with the nine five, despite having that uh, little dot of whitening at the bottom. So that was, if anything, a little bit generous. Um, but overall, it didn't affect the grade of this card. I expected a solid nine, and that's what we got. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, and this is for sale, so if anyone's interested, just hit me up on Instagram. Uh, I sent two glossy regekis in this submission. This is the first of them. Uh, this one is actually a foil line error. <laughs> So it's kind of hard to see because of how dark the background is. But if you look carefully, you should be able to see that there is a line running up and down the foil here. Uh, so I, I thought that might affect the surface grade. 
But at the same time, I thought it might not because whereas Beckett in general has been very harsh on these errors recently, uh, this one is so hard to see from many angles that depending on the grader, they probably just miss it entirely. So I thought anything from an 8.5 to a 9.5 on surface would be possible on this card, depending on the grader. Uh, aside from that, the centering is pretty shifted, both top to bottom and left to right, so I expected probably an 8.5 on centering. Corners are very clean uh, on the front. Uh, there's a little bit of whitening at the top on the front, if you can see that. So the edges I was probably expecting a 9 on. Uh, but aside from that, it's a packed fresh card. Uh, really no kind of wear on the back at all. Uh, so I was expecting hopefully a 9 unless the foil line error docked the surface too hard. And we ended up with a mint 9. It actually did get the 9.5 on surface, which is really nice to see. Uh, I assume it's just because the grader missed it, um, the foil line error, rather than thinking that it deserved a 9.5 surface despite having it. But either way, I'm very happy with the grade. Uh, and this one is likely being traded to a friend of mine already. Uh, next up we have the second Gehi, which uh, does not have the line error like the first one. Uh, and this is a completely pack fresh card, so I was pretty hopeful this could get a gem, especially because the centering is a bit better on this as well. Uh, it is still shifted slightly top to bottom, but it's not bad at all. Uh, and Rageki is one of the last uh, two glossy supers I'm missing for my gem mint set, along with the manual rebuff that I showed earlier. So I was definitely crossing my fingers for a gem on this. Condition-wise, the card is almost literally perfect. There's no kind of whitening. I don't think it has any factory lines on the back or any kind of scratching on the back, um, or the front for that matter. So this would have been <clears throat> pretty much a surefire gem, but what it does have, if I zoom in pretty close here, it's got a little print dot in the lower right area of the card, which is actually shaped pretty much exactly like a little love heart, which is kind of an interesting twist. I don't know how that happened. I assume um, maybe a bit of debris in the factory got into the printer uh, at the time that it was printing this sheet uh, and caused the color to distort a little bit in that area. Um, so yeah, it's actually a pretty neat error. I'm definitely like pretty happy to have this card as it is. I don't think it really affects the eye appeal or anything like that. So the hope for this was a 9.5, and we actually got that 9.5 gem mint grade, which is awesome. Um, 9.5 centering may be a little bit generous, but equally the 9th surface you could argue is a bit harsh because there's actually nothing wrong with the condition of the surface. Uh, and it's always nice to see a condition 10 subgrade. I didn't get any in my last submission. Uh, and this one got a 10 on quarter, so that's pretty neat. Overall, very happy with this one. Um, probably the highlight of the whole submission for me. Uh, next up is another glossy super. Uh, this one's a trap hole. I already have this as a quad 9.5, so it wasn't going to be going in my set, whatever happens. But this is a really clean copy overall. Uh, the centering is very good for glossy LOB. Um, surface is really clean. Uh, the seller I got this from, I got a couple of the other supers from as well. And he said he pulled them all out of packs himself a long time ago. Uh, and I, I can definitely believe that based on how clean they are. Uh, it does have a little nick at the top, so I was expecting either corners or edges would be affected. Uh, it's kind of a similar thing to what the Manuter Buck had, but it's a little bit smaller actually, and also because this card doesn't have the factory lines on the back, I thought it had a much better chance for a gem mint grade. Uh, and again, we got the gem mint grade with the 9 on edges, which I think is fair given that little nick. So this one I'm pretty happy with. Um, and again, I think this is being traded to a friend already, so it won't be for sale. And we have one last glossy LOB super to go over. Uh, this one is a dark hole. And this is the best of the whole batch that I got from that seller. Um, centering is really good. Edges and corners on the front, pretty much flawless. Um, surface is as clean as it gets. Um, really no kind of scratching. And the same goes for the back again. Um, really nice to cut corners. Often glossy LOB is a little bit kind of sharp on the corners. Um, but these are all really nice and rounded, no kind of whitening, and um, the surface again, really clean, no factory lines or anything like that. So this one, I expected a really solid grade on. Honestly, with the right grader, you could probably land a pristine on this card, but I definitely thought a quad plus, quad plus plus 9.5, something like that. And the grade we got was a basic 9.5. So this was a bit of a disappointment. I already have a Quad Plus Plus 9.5 um, Glossy Dark Hole, so it, it was unlikely to upgrade my set. But nonetheless, I really don't see any way that the Surface can deserve a 9 on this card, because it pretty much was flawless, and if anything, could have been a 10. Um, so the basic 9.5 is a bit disappointing on this. I may regrade it, but I'm not sure if it's worth it either for a Glossy Dark Hole to spend another 150 bucks getting it graded at Express. And sending standard these days just takes so long that it's it's not really worth it, even though it only costs 50 bucks. 
So this one, it probably will just stay in the case as it is, but it's a slightly disappointing grade with those subgrades. And the final card in this submission is another dark hole, but this one is actually a wavy print. Uh, you can probably see that pretty easily through the case. Uh, so like the last card, uh, this dark hole was super, super clean. I picked this up off eBay last year on auction. Um, the pictures were really good on the listing, so I expected it was going to go for more than I would bid. But somehow I won it for only 80 bucks, so that was awesome. Uh, I already had a 9.5 dark hole, but this is definitely a cleaner card than that one. Uh, again, centering is almost perfect. It's a, I think it's like ever so slightly shifted left to right, but I do think it's in the range where it could get a 10 depending on the grader. Definitely at least a 9.5 centering. Uh, aside from that, the front has nothing wrong with it. It doesn't have any of the print dots that you often get on dark hole. You get some yellow print dots um, either down in the bottom left or uh, upper right depending on the card. And the back is insanely clean to be honest for a wavy hollow. Um, the corners again nicely cut on all four corners. No kind of whitening on the edges. Um, surface almost perfect. I think it has like one or two of the lightest factory lines on the back. But we're talking really, really light. So I thought surface would likely get a 9.5. Maybe it could get a 9 from the harshest of graders. But to be honest, I don't think it really deserves that. Um, so this is another card which honestly, depending on the grader, could get a pristine. But I did at least expect a very strong 9.5. And like the other dark hole, we just ended up with that basic 9.5 um, at the 9 on surface. So you can never be too disappointed with a gem rate grade, I guess. But this is a bit of a disappointment to not get at least a quad 9.5 on this card, given how clean it is. Uh, again, I, I don't know if I'll resub it. I probably would consider resubbing this one more than the other one, just because I don't have a higher graded copy already. So if this one got higher than a basic 9.5, it would be the highest graded copy I owned. But yeah, we'll see about that. You'll probably see it in a future submission video if I do decide to crack it. Otherwise, it's just staying in my set. But overall, I'm still happy to get a gem on it at least. All right, and that brings us to the end of this returns video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any suggestions for future content um, or questions you want to ask me, just put them in the comments down below and I'll always do my best to get back to everyone. Uh, and aside from that, this is Schlost signing out and I hope you all have a great day.